Hello everyone, welcome back to Bloodowen. Last time we have made our way through Vorador's mansion and found Vorador himself. And our next objective is to go north and stop the plot to twist the land that's unraveling there. But it is about to hit full moon, so screw that. We're going to the lost city. So we're here, we're back in Termagant Forest. Uh, see when I said that there is nothing here? I meant this part, this part on the right, on the east. However, if you follow the, uh, if you follow west, then we will encounter a small island with a Stonehenge-like structure on it. This lake is called the Lake of the Dead, and it will be later known as, well, in the later games, it will be known as the Abyss. But right now, it's an entrance to a secret location called the Lost City. An important thing is that it can only be accessed on the full moon. And in addition to that, it has some uh, endgame enemies, which we are only really ready to encounter now. Because we are, as I said in the previous part, in the endgame in terms of our equipment. So this place is uh, very... Aztec slash Mesopotamian and it's really unlike anything else we find in this game so it's a very unique environment and its population is werewolves <laughs> and it also has prisoners in it for some reason I'm not sure why still uh, it's important that uh, you, if you come here, it's important that you come here on the full moon as soon as that full moon starts. Because once the full moon ends, all the doors that you have, well, all the buildings that you have not explored yet will have their doors shut. And you will have to wa wait for the next full moon. This lost city does not itself count as a secret, but it has over 20. I think it's 25 or even 28 secrets, uh, all of which we have to uncover on a full moon. If previously we had uh, our secret counter in uh, low 30s, now it's gonna be in high 50s. I think there will be like 5, 55 or 57, I think, something like, something like that. But that will happen by the time we are done with the Lost City. There are a total of five buildings in the... well, technically seven, but uh, Kane can only access five buildings and uh, each one of them consider, uh, contains a bunch of secrets and they all have a uh, similar art style but different layout and uh, they include different puzzles. We're also going to need uh, mind control there, among other things. As you can see, this part, this gate is now open, and we can proceed. By the way, speaking of the KS armor, this is how it works. If you notice, these werewolves are actually hitting me, their heads are connecting, but apart from the damage that it does to me, to Kane, they also get hurt themselves. And because of the um, damage to health ratio that I talked about several parts ago, they pretty much just about any enemy will kill itself in three to four, sometimes less hits against the case armor. 
So on the other, on the one hand, it's a very useful piece of equipment, equipment. But on the other hand, uh, some of the later game enemies, one of which we will encounter here in the Lost City, by the way, much earlier than we would originally supposed to be, they can also kill us in uh, a few hits. So it's it still usually best to not get hit. By the time we are done with uh, Draw City, we will have the maximum number of plays that we can, which is 99. And we will use them later in the game, so in hindsight, it's actually a very good thing that I have uh, decided to pay a visit to the Lost City when I did. Because in later stages, the game is just gonna throw everything it has at you. That's two buildings out of five done. These spike traps are the thing that I dread the most here in the Lost City, and you are about to find out why. That's why. Now the problem is, here in the Lost City, it's random whether a human responds if you exit the, the building or not. This one responds, but I did not know that at the time. And uh, as a result, I was uh, uh, scared. I was extremely scared. It was very scary to proceed. And this section with this human is a long one, because there will also be a lot of shays that you have to kill. You have to be very careful not to die. And then there's another section where you will also have to mind control humans, and these do not respawn. And the first time I played through this, I screwed this up. That up. And uh, as a result, I could not access basically one of the buildings in the Lost City, and it was not nice. So here I'm being extremely careful. Like, unnecessarily careful even. But I, it was scary then, when I played through this. Here you have to follow the switches and uh, kill all the shades, but unfortunately it's extremely uh, difficult to pull off because one weird hitbox and you're screwed. Because these shades will kill you in two to three hits. Basically any controlled enemy is a glass cannon. And you can see me being extremely, extremely cautious about moving forward so that I don't accidentally get hit by a random shade that's hidden in the dark. Because they do hide in the dark here. Like this. And 
And by the way, this uh, soldier always slashes twice. Unlike Kane, uh, with whom you press the button, the alt button, once and it amounts to one hit, this guy will always slash twice, no matter what. So the timing is also a bit different compared to what you were used to. And here, <laughs> I thought I was dead for some reason. Well, I mean, I thought that I died for some reason and didn't know why, but thankfully it was just a weird hitbox, but with light instead of an enemy. So it just threw me back where... threw me back to the teleporter. And this is what I mean by weird hitboxes. And all this for a few artifacts that I don't even use. Wait. At this point, I realized that this guy responds. This is the part that I screwed up the first time I played through this. I screwed th this up by accidentally using a uh, blood gout, I think. By accidentally using some other spell, something that killed this guy. And I couldn't hit that switch. And this teleporter does not amount to anything other than killing this human. And the reason why I'm stuck here is because I'm looking at a guy trying to find out what happens after this teleporter. It's an auto kill, but all you need to do is to hit the switch. By the way, it's actually daytime. Uh, I misspoke when I spoke earlier of uh, having to do everything on the full moon. There's one last build building in the northeast, the fifth building, the last building which you need to actually teleport to. Uh, and that one becomes closed during daytime. I think. Or it's contingent on uh, hitting all the switches beforehand. Actually, now that I think about it, it's d it depends on the switches. Okay, forget I said anything about the full moon. Forget I said anything. This part I expected to just walk upon using the mist form, but instead the mist form doesn't register here. I don't know why you saw it work perfectly in Vorador's mansion. You saw it yourself. Here I derp because I realized that there is a switch on the north of that room which I had to hit, which I didn't hit, and I will just cut to that part where I hit it and come back.
Okay, so we're back here. And on to the next building. And I believe that the next one is where there aren't any secrets per se, but where we encounter a bunch of enemies from late game. And since I'm me, I just cheese through them using barrier. Hello demons! By the way, these, these aren't exactly the same demons that we encounter in the later games, but the huge nasty demons that have attacks that are hard to dodge. <laughs> they are inspired by these demons. So these ones are the originals, but they are different. They're also much easier to kill, for two reasons. First, we have Barrier, unlike the following games. And the second one is the fact that they are very slow and their attacks are fairly easy to dodge. Unlike the ones in the later games where combat is more um, hack and slash, especially in Defiance. Although I always had trouble, more trouble with them in uh, Soul Reaver 2. Much like Flays, we are going to have a lot of these uh, fonts of putrescence and we are going to need them. We will use them later in the game. In fact, we won't use them, we're going to spam them. You can see even in uh, spirit forms in there, ghost forms, they take a lot of hits. And now we are at 51 secrets. And our status is Gimp. By the time we're done with this, we become a princess. This is a teleporter and we are on to the last building, last ziggurat or the pyramid or something in between. This part reminds me of Bugs Bunny and Taz, Lost in Time. Oh, I mean Time Busters. Lost in Time is the previous one where Bugs Bunny is solo. This is the point where I realized that I've gone past the door. This has some connection to Spirit Forges, but, I, I'm, but I'm not sure what that connection is. Now there's an open door in the southeast corner of the room, of the building. done with the lost city the door on the north will remain closed all that's left is to collect the flays in the center I just check out whether there are any other doors left open doors there are not come on past me <laughs> all that's left is to collect these flays in the clothes 
and get the hell out using this device. By the way, this is actually a uh, an emblem of time streaming device, so maybe... There we go, we have 99 plays, we can't pick up this one. We're still Gimp, we need a couple more secrets before we get to the princess level. And uh, maybe this has some connection to time streaming. Maybe not. To be honest, I think that it does not. And we find ourselves near Nachtholm of all places. That is strange. Still, now we're done with the Lost City. And thank you for watching, and goodbye.